six more cabins to work in there. In Mammoth Lakes, California. He came right to our window. One bear turns everything upside down. The bear comes up, breaks in windows, breaks in doors. Only the man they call the Bear Whisperer knows just how far this bear will go. That just gave me shivers up my spine that she could be alive and wreak havoc like she did a year ago. Are you all right, ma'am? It's like a crazed animal at this point. What it did to our community, what it did to me, it was all just shattering. And in the town that loves its bears. It's all right, good girl. No one thought it would come to this. There she is. You got a good shot at it, right? Mammoth Lakes, a mountain resort town located in the middle of some of California's last true wilderness. We happen to live in God's country. We're a day's walk from Yosemite. Um, it's just paradise up here. And so uh, the people know it, and uh, the bears know it too. The Mammoth Lakes area is very popular with black bears. And the residents down there have really taken to these bears. They feel that those are their bears, and rightfully so. I mean, they learn to live with these bears, and they become residents of the community, just as you know the humans that live in the area are. As the town's wildlife patrol officer, it's Steve Searle's job to teach bears to be respectful of people and their houses. A bear that encroaches on either can end up being killed by authorities. No. Move away. He relates to bears and is able to convince them not to get into people's territory in a dangerous way. He teaches them how to live with people. And he's been teaching people how to live with bears. From the minute the bears emerge from winter hibernation, Steve is on patrol. They've lost approximately 50 to 60% of their body weight surviving through the winter. So when they wake up in the spring, they're motivated entirely by food. They will wake up in the morning and they spend their entire day searching out food sources. The cycle of life that we see in mammoth, the sows and cubs, the lessers, uh, come in the very first in the spring for the food sources that are available in town. They're welcome in Mammoth, as long as they don't forget their bears. They're about 200 yards from my house. It's uh, one of my favorite places in town. And uh, the bears uh, come here and, and uh, hang out. They have everything they need, safety, um, food, water, and habitat. Natural food is good. Human food is bad. It's especially important to keep mothers, called sows, away from people food. Get out of there. Hey. Get out of there, you naughty bear. None of that. Sows teach their cubs how to eat and how to forage in a very peculiar way. The sow will eat an item, and then at the same time, the cub is watching what the sow is eating. The cub will come over to the sow and will sniff her breath. And since they have such an immense sense of smell, that registers in their brain in the memory banks that whatever mom just ate must be good food. And they'll recall on that memory at a later date and time to identify whether something's food or not. If a cub's memory banks register people food as good, it won't know how to find natural food and won't know how to teach its own cubs down the line. The longer we work with them and keep them alive, the smarter they get and the more learned they are about the ways of man, stay out of traffic, stay out of cabins, stay out of garages, stay out of cars. But each year, there are some bears who just don't get it. Every morning, Steve checks on the bears in town to make sure they're okay. Today, he is one step behind a young sow and her cub. Hello. Hi, good girl. Annoying the topography and geography of the area and where the roads lie, I could see that the bears were going to cross Lake Mary Road. And so I went up there and um, uh, waited for them so that they could maybe uh, cross a little bit safer. 
Cars do get going pretty fast right there. Here we go, here we go. As far as doing traffic control for my bears, um, it happens, you know, on a regular basis. I wish I could be there every time a bear crosses the road. She's right here, right on top. 99% of the time they cross safely. The other times, it's uh, most of the often fatal. It's all right. It's all right. There you go. Go get your baby. There you go. There you go. Pick her up. Let's go. Come on. But the sow doesn't bring the cub back with her. Something's caught her attention. Where are you going? She was absolutely going somewhere. She wasn't fooling around. You could really see she had her nose up in the air and uh, w was, you know, on a mission. 20 minutes later. All right, so you're in nine. The bears are at five. I'll be in route right now. Thank you very much for calling. Steve finds out exactly where the two were headed. Mono one, wildlife one. Wildlife one, mono one. Can you show me code four, 10 six, lower falls tract? Code four, 10 six, lower falls tract. The sow and cub uh, were just trying to break into a cabin, and so we're going to respond up here and see if it's so that she's trying to bust in would be a bad, bad thing. Hi. Good. How are you, sir? And you saw the bears? Oh, yeah. It was a, a mama and a very young cub. These old cabins up here, you know, close to 100 years old, they were built as uh, fishing homes. They're all single pane windows. They're easy to break into. It's kind of a target rich environment. Hello? Did I see by the sow's body posturing and her nose in the air that she was on her way to commit a misdemeanor? Did I know she was going to break up a door jam today? Uh, no, I'm not that good. For now, there's not much Steve can do. The bears have left the area. I need to catch them red-handed, and anything five minutes or longer after the act, I, I'll just pass on it. The bear won't have a clue what's going on, and I, I don't roll that way. Steve will work with a bear for any number of reasons. Get out of there! He uses non-lethal techniques to keep them away from crowds. You bad bear! to move them out of dangerous areas, and to let them know where they can and cannot search for food. Get out of there, you bad bear. I have dozens of tools at my disposal, everything from doing nothing and observing uh, through pepper spray, pyrotechnics, flashbang devices, audio devices, things that smell, things that whistle impact devices, rubber bullets. Every situation's different, and my job is to do the very best thing I can for the people and the bears. All right, fine. 44, 25. Copy that, thank you. Less than 24 hours after the sow and cubs attempted break-in, there's another bear report. This time, the bear got in. I have no tolerance for busting up homes. It really pisses me off when bears uh, do this. Did you folks just get here? We just got here. I saw glass. I looked at the window, it was broken. I'm like, that's odd. I thought we were robbed. The kitchen is completely trashed. Food everywhere, the, the refrigerator open, banged up. Soda cans, things I didn't even know what they were, ripped open. Tons of bite marks. You, know, you can see the slobber from the bear, and so you can pretty much estimate, you know, just from my height, the height of the bear on this single pane window. It's a front paw print and a rear paw print. It's going to be an adult bear with this set right here. And if you look, um, the bear came in and out more than once. And uh, unfortunately, I'm guessing that's a uh, cub print right oh, there. 97, a frame like A bear bringing her cub into this house. That's just terrible. The bear was in here more than once. 
Stealing is a bad thing. Mothers teach their bears, and teaching them how to break into homes will just lead to them getting killed. So you think they smelled and not saw? They smelled something? Their sense of smell is miles and miles, not just hundreds of yards. And they know whether there's pizza in the fridge or whatever. They're very, very uh, strong tar smell. Your nose is just to hold your glasses on. It doesn't even work in comparison to a bear. So should I be worried about the bacon in my car right now? The bacon's got to come out of the car right now. Yeah, uh-huh. Bear break-ins in Mammoth are rare. But last year, a bear named Blondie changed everything. Blondie was responsible for 51 different entries of homes in about a half a square mile. It was expensive homes, lower-end homes, cabins, never a tent, never a trash can. She knew uh, to walk right to the refrigerator, open the refrigerator and the freezer, and help herself. Blondie caused so much property damage, she became headline news. Authorities had no choice. They issued a shoot-to-kill permit. I never, ever saw that bear for the entire rest of the year. And it was just uh, an incredible thing that the bear just disappeared off the map, never seen again. Mono one, Wallace one, 97. Now it looks like another bear with a cub is picking up where Blondie left off. Same patterns, same locations. Uh, woman's home alone. Tim for a copy. A half mile from the last break-in, the sow and cub are trying to get into another home. This time, the house is occupied. <laughs> Hello? Are you all right, ma'am? Where are they at? There's nothing out here. No, ma'am. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm OK. All Let's right. You can get through a window out there. All right. Bears should not be pulling on anybody's window, uh, especially an occupied home. I take it very seriously in order to get a bear shot. I wish I got here sooner, and uh, I would have dealt with it right then. And um, we're just a few minutes behind the call. It was on the ground, and it was facing you, and it was biting on your window. And the baby was right in between all those little trees there. All right, thank you very, very much. Mono one, wildlife one. I'm going to um, be 98 from the call, report taken. Uh, the bears are UTL, but I'll be tr patrolling the area for the next hour or so. Within a half hour, Steve gets the tip he's been hoping for. We had a call from one of my uh, neighbors out here and let us know that the sow and cub was lurking around again. And if I can catch her red-handed, it'd be just great. Straight up this way? Yeah, right up the hill. I think we're hot on her trail, and again, no offense to her, but uh, she has been acting up a little bit, and done correctly, aversive conditioning can change her habits for life. Copy, so. There you go. Pardon. Pardon. Steve stays a short distance away from the bears, hoping to catch them attempting another break-in. But then... <laughs> neighborhood dogs frighten the bears. The sow runs one way, the cub heads up the nearest tree. With the sow and cub separated, Steve shifts his efforts from punishing the bear to reuniting her with her cub. We got three dogs on the bear right now. We got a baby cub right here at 10 feet. She can't leave the cub here. Uh, you guys could keep your dogs with you. Yeah, yeah she, oh, he's just good. right behind us, a little okay. eight pounder. Yeah. We have to hook him back up. She can hear you. She's on her way. Yeah. 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 
Here she comes. All right, all right. Hurry up. It's all right. Come get that cub. Go ahead. Call her down. You're all right. Go home. Go on. Now. Go home. Go home. Go home. Let's go. Good dogs. Go home. Go on. Go on. Get. We almost had it down and uh, reunite these guys. Those dogs just got loose again, which kind of irks me. But um, good dogs just, uh, you know, charging after the bear, and that's what dogs do. Finally, after 40 minutes, Here she comes. Come over the south town. Here's the baby coming down. There you go. Come on. You all right? You're okay. You're all right. The sow and cub reached the ground, but there's still a lesson to be learned. She was walking away at a slow speed instead of running away. Bears need to learn to be afraid of people. That's my job sometimes, is to professionally be mean to bears. Get out of here. Go on, get. Steve shoots at the sow, not the cub. Go on, get out of here. Go on! I lit her up and uh, gave her a, a rubber ball on the ass. One oh one wildlife one. I just fired two deferrent rounds on this sow out on uh, Woodman Street. Uh, we're code four. Uh, just FYI, if you get somebody calling in, they are non-lethal uh, rubber rounds, light fields, and um, they're. Uh, they work just great. It's a soft rubber, and um, just reach out and tap her and let her know she's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Don't be walking around midday checking windows. We'll treat you like any other perpetrator in our town. Steve measures his success with the bears by their actions. 24 hours after shooting rubber bullets at the sow and cub, they're staying away from homes and eating their natural food in the forest. It looks like the aversive conditioning is working. Wow, I mean, this is what it's all about uh, when we get them to practice more of this behavior and less human action uh, behavior. My job is uh, the, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. In the quiet of the forest, Steve gets his first close-up look at the sow. These young bears are difficult to identify sometimes with them shutting out and changing colors. This one's a two-tone bear a little bit unusual. It's three and a half year old female. She came out of hibernation with two cubs. One died right away early in the spring, and then she was left with one cub. She entered at least three different homes while she had her cub. One of the really odd things is that the homes are all being vandalized in the daytime. Steve begins to piece together everything he knows about this bear. It all seems eerily familiar. The size makes sense. Her age makes sense. Every single thing indicates that it's the bear who entered all the homes. Last year, Wandy. That she could be alive and wreak havoc, that just gave me shivers up my spine. Dark head dark legs, blonde uh, straps and back, blonde highlights. That hasn't changed much other than the blonde continues to darken, but uh, those same basic uh, color patterns, same age, same sex, same homes that are being broken into. Blondie never went in a single home at night. She only went in homes in the daytime, which made it even more offensive. 
When Blondie first appeared, she was an orphan cub who had to learn how to survive on her own. The bear's been staying out of trouble. It did enter this home last week through an open window. That's just terrible for a bear to learn those lessons. Um, this bear is going to grow up to be a big, huge bear. And uh, if we don't train him correctly from the start, then uh, we get what we deserve. I'm sorry, buddy. You're doing good, huh? The bear just got in the habit of going into houses that were open, all soft entries, open sliding glass doors, open windows, and it would go straight to the fridge, right past the trash can, and uh, help itself to uh, ice cream or fine cheeses. Guava was a favorite. People weren't afraid of it. Uh, they didn't report uh, what she was doing, and uh, they would just shoo her out of the house. Go on, you cute bear, and keep the cookies. And so it went unchecked and unreported dozens of times. What are you doing here? Hey, what are you doing here? You bad bear. You bad bear. No more. It was just a really, really bad example of loving on bears too much. People just went out of their way to protect her. The bear came out of den last year and proceeded to enter homes. Again, they were all soft entries in a half a square mile. 51 times it entered homes. Go on, get out of here! I just could not put a stop to it. Uh, rubber bullets, flashbang, pyrotechnics, the food reward, and the people doting over that bear outweighed me being mean to the bear. The bears left the area. But there was another issue hampering Steve's efforts to teach Blondie, Mammoth Lakes borders federal forest land. Steve's area of responsibility is within the four square miles of our town, where Steve can use all of his techniques and efforts to dissuade bears and try and change their behavior patterns. When Blondie raided homes outside Steve's jurisdiction, he was powerless to stop the behavior. Really, it was quite evident that Blondie was going to push the envelope until somebody had to shoot her. A shoot-to-kill permit was issued for Blondie. But then, as if the bear could sense it, Blondie disappeared, and the shoot-to-kill permit expired. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours uh, trying to locate her or her carcass, and uh, was unsuccessful. It was really odd, but the bear never showed up again. Until now. And though she's broken into three cabins, Steve doesn't punish her. For the moment, she's not breaking any of the rules. We reward our bears by silence and privacy for doing the right thing. It looks like she wants to um, suckle and uh, feed her cub. And so we're just about to back out of here and uh, we'll leave her alone. But she's being a good bear and it's great to see. For three days, there are no reports of Blondie and her cub. Marty and copy Wallace one. I was on patrol in the car in front of me. Came to an abrupt stop, so I stopped to see what the problem was. You could tell he was rattled. I walked up to the car. He wouldn't even roll the window down at first. Then he cracked it and told me that a car coming the opposite way up towards Lake Mary had just missed the mom bear and hit a cub right in front of him. Marty, how long have you been here? Just about five minutes. I, I just missed it. Uh-huh. Uh, the little cub got rolled behind its mom. The mom is presumably on scene. It was dragging the bear off the road. And uh, not good at all, but we'll see if we can help a little bit. I can hear the sow and hear the cub. She's absolutely on scene, Marty. You got lethal on you? Yes. Yeah. The bear was moving like 20 feet each way. You can hear it go down a little bit, come up the hill a little bit. You know, it was moving around like it was pacing back and forth, you know? Sounds like about where that pine is right there. That's what I'm thinking too, Marty. You're right on top of it. We got out spotlights and started looking right off the roadway for the bear. It was right within five feet of us. She's yeah, down to my left now. Right here, Marty. Oh. That's your sow. All right, good girl. All right, she's got it. Hello, good bear. 
the Cubs. She's looking to her right. The Cubs to her right. Hello, good girl. Oh, f Is she coming towards us or is she going down? No, she's probably trying to revive them. Okay, okay. This is a really steep slope right here. Watch yourself now. Watch yourself. Okay. F me. Where we can't work through this brush, that bear can come through here faster than the fastest human on earth. You need to be careful when you're dealing with an injured bear. Uh, the cub is, you know, is. All right. the cub. I'm guessing it's 11.44. Oh. oh boy. Son of a bitch. The cub died while we were there and we could hear its vocalization stop. She's moving over a dead cub, not a live one. I hear you. I hear you. The mom was just mourning, and I haven't heard her sound like that before. I can't say what she's thinking. I could only hear her wailing in grief. Oh, girl. Oh, I wish I could help the thing more. You have a really, really anxious sow that's just lost her young, and for the safety of everyone involved, we're going to lay back off this scene. I share in her grief. I've seen it go on for, you know, done filming guys. I didn't sleep at all and the thoughts that went through my mind and the images I replayed it a few times last night. I have personal experience of people losing their children it will ruin the rest of your life. All of this has been trampled down and uh, obviously uh, the bear went through here. 51% of all black bears die before they're 18 months old. It is something that bears have to deal with all the time. I don't see any blood or hair or the body of the young bear and uh, kind of happy for that. Uh, she must have dealt with it in her own way. And um, <clears throat> we won't have to do any body recovery today. I see some of the most beautiful things, you know, that anyone could ever imagine. And I also see some of the most horrendous, and it can happen an hour apart. I'm the luckiest guy in the world, and some days suck. Blondie disappears. Steve is now monitoring the big bears who have come into town and taken over the prime feeding areas. 
Like the bear who's made a local golf course his home. Steve calls him Half Bib. Well, we call him that because of the big blaze on his chest. It looks like a bib. Uh, he comes out about this time every evening and uh, enjoys the cool grass. Uh, have a poop and a pee and a little bit of food and water. He's a no harm, no foul bear. He's never caused any problems in Mammoth. I can't document a single 911 call that we were on with that bear. You can set your clock by his habits, and his habits are all good habits. And uh, we'll give him all the room he needs. In the summer, um, he does try to hold space in some of the most prime habitat. And uh, in this case, he can hold his own um, in the golf course and makes a good living there on the grass, the flowers, uh, the wasps, the insects, the larvae. It's just a, a really rich place for food. not so nervous around people, but other bears, and so his nose is constantly working, uh, making sure that there's not other male dominant bears in the area. Tonight there's not, and so he's got the place to himself. Oh, big guy. Oh, big guy. He isn't uh, habituated, but does he know the ways of man, the traffic patterns, what time the bars close? Uh, he sure does and uh, he's uh, a great example of the bears that we want to keep alive in Mammoth. But not all bears play by the rules of Mammoth Lakes. There's a bear in a cabin up at Twin Lakes, uh, cabin number four. Here's the entry spot, and the bear went in and out a couple of times, and then just before you got here, headed up the back trail. It's kind of ripped the side off and looks like it hopped on the bed and went in. Bear was in here for a while. Can you see the blonde colored hair? Could you describe him for me? It's not a big, big, super mature looking bear to me, but it's not a little guy either. She has some pictures here, Steve. You could, Hold it. You could scroll through. Oh, no. This is Blondie. 44, 15, 44, 11. Three weeks after Blondie's cub was killed by a car, the bear is out of control. He came right to our window. Raiding multiple houses daily. I looked up, and there it was by that big tree, just looking at just the cabin. Right, I said, there you, he huh? is. And, and we know that bear. It's that young bear that the baby was killed. After her cub was killed, she had more free time and uh, started a new rash of burglaries. A cub in tow is a restraint. Uh, she doesn't have that restraint anymore. Blondie's now able to travel faster and farther. She moves outside of town back to land controlled by the federal government, the same area where she caused so much damage a year before. Steve is powerless to do anything. It's beyond his jurisdiction. I was ordered to stand down in those areas with any type of tool that I might use on a bear. Copy that. We'll be documenting. I guess. A letter was served to the city council, the police department, and to myself stating that I was not welcome to work with bears, uh, lethal or non-lethal, anywhere in those tracks of cabins. But Steve isn't prohibited from being there, and he wants to monitor the situation. Look at every one of these has got bear prints all over them from the same bear trying to push it in. This is the fifth one on the block I know of. Not cool. Six more cabins are broken into. The owner of the lodge at Twin Lakes, he's had uh, eight or nine entries with dogs in the house, with people in the house. This is uh, happening, you know, every day now. The scene is so typical, you know, cupboards opened, refrigerator opened, all the good sweet food gone. I think we're up to 17 or 18 cabins now up in the Lakes Basin and probably uh, three quarters of a square mile. They get pretty aggressive and pretty confident once they succeed. It was not easy to uh, shoo it away. And usually I can shoo them. And now, 
I just feel we're all in jeopardy. We love the bears and um, we hate to see anything bad happen to them, but my view is you do everything you can and if there's nothing else you can do, and sometimes you have to get rid of it. What it did to our community, what it did to me, what it did to the reputation of the town, it was all just shattering. People were just horrified both ways. The people that wanted the bear killed, the people that didn't want the bear killed, the people that are in the middle of the road, the politicians, it was just absolutely insane. The bear comes up, pulls off the shutters, breaks in windows, breaks in doors, throws things everywhere. Don't be discouraged from picking up the phone. And... Yeah, but your police cannot do anything no. to get rid of the bear. If the bear breaks into that cabin and I'm in there and I shoot that bear, what happens? Do I have that right to actually use a firearm in my home? It's probably too late to save her now and something needs to be worked out because we're here leaving our cabins up there vulnerable to that bear still. We have done everything that we know and still right now we have a road bear. Could the bear bowl somebody over escaping from a residence on that part was very, very possible. As hard as it is, I need to admit defeat with that bear. To destroy a bear, law enforcement needs what's called a depredation permit. We had a summer home owner get a depredation permit from the California Department of Fish and Game, which is a process that allows a homeowner to either remove themselves or contract with someone to remove a nuisance animal. She usually um, went in places that weren't occupied and that were shuttered up, and she would just tear the shutters off, push in the windows. And that's what made her such a dangerous bear because there was no protection. I mean, if you can't, if your shuttered cabin doesn't protect you from a bear, then you have no defense. Steve wants to be the one to take the shot. I have gone public asking permission uh, to take the life of this young bear. I have a, a huge connection with this particular bear. Uh, I've spent countless hours uh, dealing with this. If you're not prepared to remove a certain bear out of the population, then you shouldn't be in this line of work. But the permit is for property outside of Mammoth City limits. That bear is in a jurisdictional mess and is on the other side of an imaginary line that the Forest Service owns that property and it's not within the four square miles of town proper, then I'm not allowed to do my work. And um, boy, am I pissed off. By law, the destruction of the bear falls to federal government trappers who will capture and euthanize her. Relocation is against California Fish and Game policy. We have multiple tools at our disposal that we can use in order to capture a wild bear. We have culvert traps or large cage traps that will put some type of a bait inside, usually a, a, a food source that bears are accustomed to. It, when the bear crawls into the culvert and grabs that bait, it releases the, the doors and they slam shut and then they lock, and then that bear is trapped inside the culvert trap. And, uh, you know, typically they're euthanized with a firearm. Bears being shot in the head in live traps bothers me, and especially when it could be prevented. Whatever happens, we should be responsible for ourselves and for our bears. Well, that's why it says don't feed our bears instead of don't feed the bears, because they're not somebody else's bears. They're our bears, and you ought to be responsible for them, good or bad. That night, the traps are set. Blondie never shows. A bear is not a nocturnal bear. It only does daytime burglaries. As every day passes, destroying her becomes a hotter issue for the community that loves its bears. It's not black and white. There is no books written about this or laws written about this. It's to good judgment. We're all here to serve the public. And what would the public want? What would mom and dad and the normal, everyday people that aren't on scene, what would they be saying to do? Shoot, shoot. 
Steve can't do anything to save Blondie. The most he can do is help find her and make sure authorities get the right bear. When I pulled in there, I could see that one of the cabins that was broken into last week, that the windows had been repaired. Uh, all the shutters had been torn off, the screens had torn off, the window was covered with her prints. David 1, Wildlife 1. Wildlife 1, 4410. Yeah, it's breaking into another cabin now. I'm just going to confirm with you. We got the go-ahead. We're good to go. Okay. Yes. Okay. We have the piece of paper. The folks who own the summer homes up here, their personal safety is my responsibility. I have to do the right thing by them. And that meant um, that this bear needed to be killed. Blondie has become a public safety hazard. The bear continues her rampage. But it's daytime, and the feds aren't present. Now it falls to the Mammoth Lakes Police Department to destroy her. Know where he is. Steve. I'm behind the Olson cabin. We're probably 300 yards up from where my truck is. The more of us that are moving through here, the more noise we're going to make. So, you everybody just kind of slow down and be conscious of that. My thoughts were um, to make it clean, uh, to make it safe, and to just get the problem solved. The bear was probably full from eating and was laying down at the base of a tree. I stayed eyes on the bear. Uh, they got locked and loaded. We're OK. Take your time. Take your time, Karen. Yeah, I'm sorry. Shot, yes? Yeah, go. Yeah. Well. Yeah, everybody stand down. I was sorry that we'd gotten to the point with this animal. It's just, we have such a unique environment up here. We certainly, as human beings, have a responsibility in that, in that we allowed the animals to get to the point where they started to look for human food instead of their own. I've got a vested interest in it. My cabin's been broken into three times in the last three weeks. Okay. I, I, yes, I understand Did that. Did you get him? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. And she's actually a she. And yes, sir. Is that the one? That's the one. We're really happy that uh, the authorities came here and took care of this guy. It's too bad, but it's it's tough. You know, they can be smart about those.
is. Yeah. Um, or she might have, it might have taken her a day to go in, but, you know. Yeah. California Department of Fish and Game wildlife biologists will take the carcass. They're responsible for disposing of the body. For the time being, I've taken possession of the bear. Maybe uh, collect our thoughts uh, before we turn the bear over to be put in the landfill. None of this had to happen this way. It's. Uh, I'm not a religious man, but I think I'm a spiritual man, and um, the Native Americans taught me to follow their lead and make an offering to this guy, help this guy along a little bit best we can. Can you show me 98 from the Lakes Basin? Sounds like. 